And this is the uniqueness. This is the uniqueness that I come and I tap from Perina's anointing. I come, I tap from Aunt Peace's anointing. I come, I tap from Kaka, Mary's anointing. I tap from the different anointings in this place. Anoint, I come and tap from Christine's anointing in Chigali. I come, I tap from anointings from different places. Oh, so when we come, we are blessed and we stay. We tarry. We tarry. Mm. Tarry. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Glory to God. Have you been blessed this seminar? Have you been blessed this seminar? <laughs> you know, we thank God for this. We thank God for this. This location. All you need is data. Can you imagine? All you need is data. We give God the glory. Staying at the feet of Jesus. It's a pillar. Mary found it in Luke chapter 10, towards the end. Jesus said, Mary has found the right thing and it shall not be taken away from her. Ah, ah. Some of us have discovered the secret. Mm. Staying at the feet of Jesus. That, that, that Martha was distracted by a lot of serving. But Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and listened to his teaching. Come, and after coming, stay. Hallelujah. I tell you the truth, there is good food here. There is good food here. God is doing us well here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The, I woke up this morning and in my heart I was saying, Now, Lord, what, what do we talk about today? What do we talk about today? And I just had the word in my spirit. Wisdom. Wisdom. And so we want to talk a little bit about the pillar of wisdom. Are you excited about it? Hallelujah. Are you excited about it? We want to talk a little bit about wisdom. But we are going to talk about it in a way that you might not have heard about it. Mm. Abo. We are going to talk about the gaining of it. Mm. Are you excited about it? I'm excited, Karoshita. I want you to open your Bible in uh, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Is that how they pronounce it? Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10. Oh, we give you glory, Jesus. We give you honor, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for this day. This is the day that you have made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We thank you because the boundary lines have fallen for us in pleasant places. We thank you that we have a delightful heritage in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, listen to this word of God. It says, If the axe is dull and the man does not whet the edge, he must put forth more strength. But wisdom helps him to succeed. Hmm. You see that? That enough is a, that 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 is enough word, don't you think? <laughs> I'm sure all of us want to succeed this year, don't you? I want to succeed. I want to succeed at my workplace. I want to succeed 
in the ministry i want to succeed uh, as a father i want to succeed as a husband i want to succeed as a pastor i want to don't you i want to succeed i don't know about you i don't want to just be a statistic i tell you the truth i don't want like the upper room church to be one of the churches just a statistic that there are these number of churches i don't want uh, this church without walls to be you know one of those online there are too many online platforms we want to succeed we want to succeed we want to be able to help those who come here i want to succeed no let's read that script again if the axe is dull and the man does not wait the edge he must put forth more strength but wisdom helps him to succeed uh, niv version of this verse says if the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened more strength is needed but skill will bring success you see that the axe is the, i want you to see yourself as that axe this morning mm. actually there is a scripture i was reading about it yesterday i think it is in jeremiah chapter 52 or something it talks about how god was speaking to cyrus and told him that you are my battle axe mm? you are my battle axe and uh, if my notebook was nearby I, would, I i read that scripture i wrote it down you are my battle axe and i believe that each one of us we are god's battle axes eh? god wants to use us in our fields god wants to use us in our world i am god's battle axe you know to help you to uh, usher you into another dimension to help you to bring revelation to you to bring healing to you and, and things like that i am god's battle axe your god's battle axe in your area ah ah hallelujah hallelujah we are battle axes of the lord but as battle axes of the lord we have to be sharp we have to be sharp axes mm? uh -huh. thank you thank you you cyrus of pasha are my battle axe and weapon of war get <laughs> I am God's weapon of war. Oh, Jesus. I am God's whip. God is fighting sickness. God is disease. God is fighting poverty. God is, is fighting broken marriages. God is fighting ignorance. And I am his battle axe. I am his weapon of war. You need to look at yourself. You know, I saw this thing and I, I told myself, one of those days, one of those days, I'll organize a, I'll start organizing a conference and we shall either call that conference Battle Axe or Sharp Axe. I don't know, but it will have axe in it. Just note that. You, you will hear about it. Hallelujah. You know, if the axe is dull, its edge is unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. You know, I wrote in my Bible, I, I was reading this verse and I wrote something. I wrote there a note. I want to read you the note I wrote. I said, this is it. This is why in every area that God 
has called us. We must keep studying. We must keep praying. We must keep trying out things. This is whetting the edge. Otherwise, we shall be axes, yes, but dull axes. It's possible to be an axe, but a dull one. Yeah. To be a church, but you're not a sharp church. To be a minister, but you're not a sharp minister. There are different people that are preaching, but you can listen to one and say, this is a sharp preacher. Do you get this? I believe that in this upper room we have some really good preaching, some really good teaching. Don't you think? <laughs> we have some really good preaching and teaching. You know, it does not just happen. It does not just happen. The axe has to be sharpened again and again and again. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? In whichever area, there's a scripture, Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5. Okay, let, let, let me read it for you. It says, get skillful and godly wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget or turn back from the words of my mouth. Forsake not wisdom, and she will keep, defend, and protect you. Love her, and she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is, get wisdom. Can you imagine? <laughs> the beginning of wisdom is, get wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. And with all you have gotten, get understanding. Verse 8, prize wisdom highly and exalt her, and she will exalt and promote you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. She shall give your head a wreath of gracefulness, a crown of beauty and glory she will deliver to you. Oh, 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 hear all my son and receive my sayings. And the years of your life shall be many. This is wisdom talking. I have taught you in the way of skillful and godly wisdom. Comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God. I have led you in paths of uprightness. When you walk, your steps shall be unhampered. When you run, you shall not stumble. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are talking about being a sharp axe. We are talking about being sharp in what God has called us to do. And for us to be sharp, the Bible has told us wisdom. When we are acquiring wisdom, we are sharpening ourselves as God's battle axes. Are you with me? It says get wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is get wisdom. James 1.5 says, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of the giving God, who gives to everyone liberally and grudgingly, without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given him. If anybody is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God. Uh, Proverbs 2 6 says, For the Lord gives skillful and godly wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. I tell you, you need wisdom, I need wisdom. I want us to agree on that matter. You need wisdom, I need wisdom. We know. The Bible says, if the axe is dull and the man does not weigh the edge, he must put forth more strength. You know, if you don't have wisdom, you'll use a lot of strength and have little results. Yeah, 
I tell you the truth. There is praying for the sick and you use a lot of strength and you don't get results. But there is when you sharpen your edge with wisdom. There is when you study to understand this thing. Then when you are ministering, you minister with wisdom. Wisdom about that area. That's why we have all these different schools. That's why we have the spiritual foundation course. That's why we have the healing schools. That's why the pastors in the upper room churches, they're undergoing a course. They're undergoing a course. And I'm concerned when I notice that some of them are not studying or not showing themselves to study. It's possible that they could be withdrawn from the game. You see, when you see uh, a football, uh, when the manager comes on, uh, the, you know, when there is a game going to happen, then the manager will come and um, they will name their starting eleven. And sometimes you expect a certain player to be you know, on the starting eleven, and that day they are on the bench. And when they ask the manager, but you have this star, but why is he on the bench? Uh, the manager will tell you that uh, he did not show himself to be fit during training. Hmm. Uh, we didn't like his attitude on the training ground. Or he suffered some kind of injury on training. Or he, <laughs> he's not fit enough to play. And they put him on the bench. Yeah. So uh, sometimes I, I withdraw ministers from the game. Yeah. I do. I do. I withdraw ministers from the game. If I see that you're not giving a good account of yourself on the training ground, I withdraw you from the game. Because when we come to the actual game, we have to present battle axes that are sharp hmm. is this making sense are you getting this god wants to have battle axes that are sharp that are sharp that are sharp in every area that god has called you you need to seek wisdom child of god Wisdom is the, the Bible says, wisdom is the principal thing. In all your seeking, seek wisdom. Seek wisdom. You know, invest. Invest. Uh, there's a scripture in Proverbs. It says, buy the truth and sell it not. Buy the truth and sell it not. But it, it, basically, it is literally saying, do whatever you can to get wisdom. Do what, spend whatever you can to get wisdom. Yeah. Read around your area. Read around your area. I do a lot of reading around the area of wisdom, uh, of healing. Yeah. It, 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 it is not, there was a time when I, I prayed and fasted, prayed and fasted, prayed and fasted, prayed and fasted, 40 days, 20 days, what? There's a time I did like 80 days and what? You know, a time I, I literally fasted and fasted and fasted and um, like eating was no longer part of my, you know, and I, until I, I think I re God told me that now you have it. You have been praying for this thing and whatever. But, you know, I had to now add something to the prayer and fasting. I had to study. Uh, I had to study and see how this thing is done. Are we together? Are we together? Right now, I have been thrust into this church planting and I now have a church that I'm pastoring and what? I am, st you should know, I wish you could know that I spend hours and hours, hours and hours studying, 
studying, studying, writing these things, you know, coming up with these things, writing, thinking, reading, studying. I'm studying from the best. I'm studying from Doug Hayward Mills. I'm studying from Rick Warren. Right now, we're studying from Rick Warren. I'm studying from, uh, you know, David Yogicho. Whoever has made it in the field that I find myself in, I am now studying from them because... I just don't want to be just an axe. I, I, life is too short to waste it. Life is too short. I don't have too many lives to pastor this church. I don't have very many opportunities to pastor this church. So when, 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 when God brings people to me on a Sunday, I want to be able to minister to them with excellence. I want to be able to, uh, this church that God has given me to pastor, I want to be able to grow it. I want to be able to, to, to ah, whichever area that God has put you, child of God, See yourself as a as a, as a battle axe. See yourself as a battle axe. You know, you're not just a businessman. You're not just an administrator at the workplace. You're not just a manager. You you know, like you just wake up, go sit at a desk, go home, wake up, go sit at a desk, go home. No, 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 no. We are kingdom fellas. We are kingdom material. We are. We are people who are pushing the kingdom agenda. We are pushing the kingdom agenda. The Bible says of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. We are God's agents. We are, we are God's sales representatives. I usually like to call myself, I say I'm, God's, I'm a sales rep for the kingdom of God. You know, there are these groups you find yourself on and then they have a certain day when they are advertising and people are saying, I sell curtains, people are saying, I sell shoes, I sell what? And I usually come in and I say, I am here also. Uh, I am a sales representative for the kingdom of God. Uh, we deal in a number of things uh, in our kingdom. Uh, we deal in healing. Uh, we deal in miracles. We deal in uh, salvations. And, uh, you know, the thing about our kingdom is that you buy without paying. And, uh, you know, uh, our, our, our business has been going on for the last 2,000 years. It's a very uh, prosperous business. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, I'm a sales rep. I'm a sales rep uh, for the kingdom of God. And wherever you are, you are a sales rep. And you have to be good at it. You have to be good at it. You have to be good at it. Because there are people who are waiting to put us down. I tell you the truth. There are people who hate you. There are people who, just because you follow Jesus, there are people who hate you. There are people who are waiting for your downfall. There are people, they just even don't know why they hate. There are some people, when I was doing masters, there are some guys in the department, they hated me. They even didn't know why they hated me. But later I realized why they hated me. Jesus said, if they hated me, they will hate you. You know, people just hate you. You know, so there are people who, are, who hate you and what. So... <laughs> To fight, to fight back, to fight back, you must be the best. You must be the best at what God has called you to do. You, so that you are literally, uh, you are literally indispensable. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? If the axe is dull, the man doesn't wear the edge. He must put forth more strength. But wisdom helps him to succeed. Skill will bring success in the area that God has put you, wherever you find yourself. This year, add a skill. This year, add a skill. This year, do some extra course. Yeah, do some extra course. Don't, don't be there and saying there are no jobs. There are no jobs in Uganda. There are no jobs, you know, and you're doing nothing about it. There, there, there are so many online courses you can take. There are so many things you can add to yourself so that, you know, when you finally appear on that interview, don't just show papers of, uh, I graduated in uh, 2017. Did you add anything? No, I've been there waiting on God, believing on God. Anyway, what when you what what are you doing while you're believing God? 
What are you doing? Do something. Add some course. You know, my wife is always there doing do this online course. She tells you there's now this course. You see her taking some online course and what? And because of that, that girl is sharp, my friend. She's sharp. That girl, she's so sharp. You know, now she, I, I have to pay her to analyze my, my work, you know, when I do research and what. The girl, she, she did do some courses in data analysis and what. Now I have to pay her, you know, to analyze my data. She just tells me, bring, bring me, give me, give me your results. I analyze them for you. She's sharp. She's sharp. When the axe is dull, the man does not wear the edge. He must put forth more strength. But wisdom, wisdom helps him to succeed. Wisdom helps him to succeed. Add some skill, child of God. Add some skill. You wait. Uh, you know, you wait. I was telling my, my, the pastors, you know, you know, we, we have that group where we are studying and whatever. And I put there what I'm studying. I put there. Sometimes I open a page in my book. I, I put it there. And, you know, some of them are quiet. Whatever. I, I just put it there. I want them to see, to see those things. So that five years from today, five years from today, when they see me pastoring a church of 1,000 people, five years from today, when they see the upper room church being the church being talked about all over the nation, they will know how it started. They will know. They will know how it started. Yeah. They will know how it started. Yeah. I want to be a sharp pastor. I tell you the truth. I, I, I want to be a sharp minister. I want to be a, a sharp healing minister. I want to be... Uh, and you know, the things I'm talking about, give me some, just five minutes. The things I'm talking about, it is not just um, about preaching and pastoring. That it is in every area. We've seen that scripture. It says, get wisdom. Gain wisdom. Get wisdom. Get skill. Get skill in whatever area you find yourself. Get skill. Add something. Add, add value. You know, what, what we're talking about is when you get wisdom, it will add value to you. When your value increases, they pay more for you. When you, when you add value to yourself, instead of looking for jobs, they look for you. They start calling you saying, there's this thing, you, you know, you, can you, you know, there are people who preach and they are never invited to preach in some conference and whatever. Then others, they are turning down invitations. They say, I, I'm sorry, I can't make it. I'm already booked and what, you know, people, you know, people come to invite me and they, they tell you, uh, can you come and minister to us? On Friday this week, I said, I can't come. You should have called me, you should have told me three months ago, and things like that. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you now just can't call me, like, come and preach tomorrow, come and whatever. Because you'll find me ministering in a seminar. you find me in an online seminar. You'll find me, they somebody wanted me to minister, I told them, you know what, let me do this in either March or April or something, because they kept coming to my inbox. Please respond, please respond. You know, uh, if you can do it this uh, this Friday. Well, I said, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Because I have sharpened my axe. Because I have sharpened my axe, I have improved and increased on my value. And because I have increased on my value, there are so many people that want to benefit from my value. Do you get this, child of God? Is this making sense? Sharpen your axe. Sharpen your axe. I want to be sharp as a parent. I want to be sharp as a, as a husband. You know, I was telling people the other day in church that don't think that marital counseling ends when you wed. Counseling is ongoing. Counseling is ongoing. After you get married, be part of a dynamic marriage fellowship where you keep learning. You keep learning. You, you keep getting better as a husband. You keep getting better as a spouse. The things you fight about, the things you're quarreling about, some people fought them, fought about them until they sharpened their axe and became better. You can learn from them. 
You can learn from them. You know, the Bible says, he who walks with the wise, he who is a companion of wise, uh, he who walks with the wise is wise, but a companion of fools will be brought to ruin. You get this? You want wisdom. Walk with the wise. Walk with the wise. Have fellowship with the wise. Have fellowship with the wise. You know, after we bought our land uh, in Barara, and, you know, when we identified it, you know, I, I keep showing, like, a, a few pictures to our ministers. You know, the, the people I take there, you know, to pray over the land, to bless the land and things like that. You know, I told them, I took their one pastor friend of mine and said, you see the kind of people who are on the land and blessing it? Why? The man had just finished... Uh, paying for their land in Kampala, 500 million, 525 million they had paid for their land. And uh, those are the kind of people I sharpen myself with. Those are the kind of friends I have, my friend. You know, if you want to, if you want to, uh, to fly, if you think you are called to be an ego, don't start uh, associating so much with chicken. You get what I'm talking about? Yeah, he who wants to be wise walks with the wise. That's why I thank God that you guys come to the upper room because you, you, you have a destiny. You have a destiny and you're serious about your destiny and you want to be in the company of people who are serious about their destiny. You, are, you know that you are an axe and you want to be sharp. That's why you wake up every morning 5 a.m. and you're praying and you're listening to the word of God. That's why you are here in the seminar listening, listening, listening because you're serious about your destiny. You know there's somewhere God is taking you and you want to be... Uh, Ah, cool, yes, sir. ah, glory to God. Has somebody picked something? Be a sharp axe. Be a sharp axe. Be a sharp father. Be a sharp husband. Be a sharp manager. Be a sharp preacher. Be a sharp pastor. Be a sharp minister. Get wisdom. In all you're getting, get wisdom. It shall be a pillar for you in 2022. I tell you the truth. It shall be a pillar for you. It shall be a pillar for you. If there is something you can ask, ask for wisdom. And when you ask for wisdom, don't just now stay there. Don't just stay there blank and say, I've asked for wisdom. I've asked for wisdom. Uh -uh. Now start, start reading. Get a book and whatever. As you're reading, God will pass the wisdom to you through that book. Uh, associate with the wise. God will pass wisdom to you through the wise. You know, listen to the ah. Uh, listen to the wise. Get get a tape. Attend the conference. Attend the course. Ah, uh, read the book. What you know? In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom from God. Hallelujah. I believe this word has been for somebody. Don't you think? I believe this word has for if the word has been for you just say amen just say it's for me it's for me and it will encourage me that i heard from god this morning about what to talk about glory to jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord jesus we return all the glory to you we return all the glory to you be glorified and be exalted in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.